Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are in the parish of St. Mary. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this journey with me. In the news today, now, I carried a story yesterday. I told you that a painter who is in his early 50s, he was being robbed at the entrance of the Portmore Pines housing scheme in Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. This took place Thursday night, February 8th, about 9.30. A policeman was passing in his private motor vehicle and he observed what was happening. The policeman, he intervened and a shootout ensued with him and the hoodlum. The hoodlum made good his escape. We have received a lot of messages from persons in the area who are saying that on a daily basis or nightly basis, persons in the area are being held up and robbed by hoodlums who are armed with guns. It is said that some young men in the area, they have acquired illegal guns as a means of protection. But, you see, persons must understand that this comes with a price because being held with an illegal gun is a crime. Last night, Friday, February 9, about 10 o'clock, a team of police officers, they were on patrol in the Peace Lane area of Newlands in Portmore. A group of persons were seen standing in front of a shop. We are told that one of the guys in the group, he started acting in a suspicious manner. As a result, he was accosted and searched by the police and bingo. One red and gold 9mm pistol with the serial number erased. It was affixed with a magazine containing nine rounds of nine millimeter cartridges it was found in a gray and black one strap bag that this guy was carrying this guy his name is andre van Carey, but he's popularly known as dre dre is a 26 year old university student and he's living in the portmore pines area we are told that dre he told the police that because of the amount of robberies taking place in his community that is why he had a gun for protection when he's going home well dre he was taken into police custody and he will be charged he'll be going to the courts shortly you see <laughs> portmore police job well done now i know that a lot of persons they are gonna see things differently but we either want an unlawful society or a lawful one Got it? In this next story, that guy on your screen, his name is Denarto Brown, but he's popularly known as Cooliman. Cooliman was born on September 2, 2006, 17 years old. He's living at Big Bridge in the parish of Westmoreland. Cooliman, he was picked up during an operation by the police at his home on Wednesday, January 31. He was held and subsequently charged for wounding with intent. This is after a 34-year-old security guard was at his home at Chantilly Gardens in Westmoreland on the night of Monday, January 22, about 10 o'clock. It is said that Cooleyman and a 20-year-old guy named Deshaun Bell, they invaded the security guard's home. Deshaun, he was armed with a ratchet knife and Cooleyman, he was said to be armed with a gun. Deshaun, he used the knife to inflict some serious wounds to the security guard's head. The security guard ran off and Cooleyman, he opened gunfire at him, hitting him to his right arm. So, both Cooley and Deshaun, they were arrested and charged and they were placed before the court. They were both remanded. Hear this now. The Grangel police station does not have a jail cell. They have a holding area 
right beside the guard room in the station. We are told that male juveniles, that is males under the age of 18 years old, who are arrested and are taken before the court. They were being housed at the Froome Police Station lockup, but because the Froome Police Station is being rebuilt. The male juveniles, they were being housed at the Grangel Police Station holding area. Last night, Friday, February 9, about 8 o'clock, four young hoodlums, they were in the holding area at the Grangel Police Station. We are told that two police officers were in the guard room and they were in the process of taking out one of the juveniles for him to be bailed. But the three other hoodlums, they had a plan. As the youngster was coming out of the holding area, all three young hoodlums, they pushed him onto the police officers and they made a run for it. The police, they managed to hold two of them, but then Arthur Brown, also known as Cooley, he made good his escape. So, 17-year-old Denarto Brown, he's now wanted by the police. Family members. Family members encourage him to go give up himself to the police. Otherwise, Uno Afigo bury him. Member, me tell you. In this next story, this one took place early this morning. Saturday, February 10, about minutes after 12 midnight. It took place at a bar at Mall Road in the Flower Hill area of St. James. We are learning that a group of persons, they were at the bar when a white motor car drove up and stopped. We are told that a hoodlum came out of the car. He was armed with an M16 rifle. The hoodlum, he opened gunfire at the persons in the bar who ran off in different directions. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape in the said motor car. When the smoke was cleared, it was realized that three persons were shot. That man on your screen, his name is Garfield McPherson, but he was popularly known as Minto or Jigo. On May 20, coming up, he would be celebrating his 50th birthday. Now, you see Jigo with his guitar? Yes, man, that's what Jigo did. He was a musician. Jigo, he lived at Coral Gardens in Montego Bay. Jigo received gunshot wounds to his upper body. A 24-year-old female known as Princess, she received gunshot wounds to both legs. And a 31-year-old guy named Clevan, he received a gunshot wound to the left side of his neck. All three persons, they were rushed to a nearby hospital where Jigo, he was pronounced D-E-A-D on arrival. Princess and Clevan, they were admitted in a serious condition. We are told that a grey Toyota Premium motor car and a grey Toyota Noah, they were damaged by bullets. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, now, listen me. Listen me carefully. I posted that guy's photo on our Facebook page this morning and I was reading the comments. The comments are there for everyone to see. There were a lot of persons posting crying emojis and saying that they went to school with him, etc. I say that to say this. Some persons are going to be upset about this report. But guess what? I care zero. Whenever I come here and I give a report... Most of the times, I do it in a way so that youngsters coming up can listen and learn something from what I am saying. There are some persons who are going to be saying, Don't speak evil of the dead. The last time I checked, the truth cannot be evil and I don't set out to tell lies on anybody. Even when they are dead. 
So, let me tell you some truths right now. That guy on your screen, his name is Otis Curlew Jr. But he was popularly known as OJ. OJ, he was born on October 18, 1997, 26 years old. He lived at Big Bridge, but he's originally from George's Plain in the parish of Westmoreland. Remember, I told you that OJ's name is Otis Curlew Jr.? His father's name is Otis Curlew Sr. Now, OJ's father, he was shot and killed in the George's Plain area of Westmoreland in about April of 2015. I will soon get back to that. I first carried a story about OJ on April 22, 2021. The Westmoreland police, acting on intelligence, they carried out a raid at Egypt Gardens in the Big Bridge area of Westmoreland. A three-bedroom concrete house was searched, but nothing incriminating was found. The police, they went to the back of the house and the said premises where several building blocks were seen. The police, they searched the area and bingo. Two illegal weapons and rounds were found. Five persons who were in the house. They were subsequently arrested and charged by the police. There were one, Melissa Banton. She was a 38-year-old factory worker at the time. Two, Brian Banton. He was a 39-year-old taxi driver at the time. Three, Samaya Banton. She was a 20-year-old teacher's college student at the time. Four, Samantha Walker. She was a 23-year-old chef at the time. And Otis Curlew, also known as OJ. He was 23 years old at the time. They were arrested and charged by the police and they were taken to the court where they were all acquitted and this was due to a lack of evidence, meaning it would be hard to prove in court who really owned these illegal guns. On October 18, that same year, 2021, OJ he posted that photo on his Facebook page. He captioned it by saying, I truly believe that every single person has to go through something that absolutely destroys them so that they can figure out who they actually are. Seeing my family in handcuffs, going to jail didn't just break me, it really destroyed me. I saved this post for months. Just to post on my birthday cause me know no fa uno. Never expect to see me or my family after those charges. It's a reminder that no na uno can't get rid of me so easy. I'm protected by energy where uno no ready to deal with. Bless you. Out. Firm ground. Happy birthday to me. So that was what OJ wrote after he and the four others were acquitted. On Monday, August 22, 2022, about 12 midday, the Westmoreland police, acting on intelligence again, they went back to a house in the Big Bridge area. I have verified if it's the same house that they went before, but during a search of the living room at the house. Bingo. The police, they found one black and chrome Smith & Wesson SW40V pistol. It was affixed with a magazine containing 14 rounds of .40 cartridges. The three persons who were at the house, they were arrested and charged. They were one, Brandon Ellison. He was 25 years old at the time. Two, Samaya Banton, and she had now graduated from Teachers College, and she was now a teacher. And the third person who was charged was none other than Otis Curlew, also known as OJ. So if you look on your screen, a PNL detective had sent me that WhatsApp message on the early morning of Wednesday, August 24, almost 1 a.m. And this was two days after they were arrested again and a few hours after I had posted the story about the second arrest. The person said, This is a pic of Otis Curlew. 
not going to lie. Growing up, he was a good person. Probably until they killed his father, Otis, in 2015. Forward to now. Everybody know OJ. That's what we call him. Everybody know that OJ has taken the wrong turn. And most, if not all his close family members, uphold with it. You heard that? The person said, Everybody know that OJ had taken the wrong turn and most, if not all his close family members, uphold with it. I got this message about 18 months ago. The person went on, OJ don't left him gone and the whole judge is playing know that. If I even pick farm him there, it in him what about? He was the one who fired back shots the evening when men came and shoot up the land and Bobby Flex got shot. Ed carried a story about Bobby Flex being killed. Brandon now just flew down from England and he and OJ are cousins. Now, the person is saying that Brandon, who was charged with OJ, he had just came in from England. So, anyhow, the person went on. I think he just need some counseling because him don't short of love or money because his family will 100% support him with that. But because his dad was shot and killed innocently, maybe that's why he chose to take this turn in his life. So you heard what the person said? Now, we are told that OJ and the two other persons who were charged for the gun. They were out on bail awaiting trial. That guy on your screen. His name is Vanel Parkinson, but he was popularly known as Gio. Word on the street is that Gio, he was the Dan or the enforcer of a water lane in the George's Plain area of Westmoreland. Word on the street is that OJ was Gio's second. It is being said that OJ. He was involved in many MAME activities in George's Plain and other places in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, Gio, he was shot and killed by hoodlums on the afternoon of Thursday, November 9 at Water Lane. We are told that since Gio's killing, word on the street is that OJ, he would be next. Our information is that a funeral service was to be held for a relative of OJ in the Old Arbor area of St. Catherine, either today or tomorrow. But the dead yard was held last night. Persons knew that OJ, he was going to be attending. And may I talk about his relatives, his friends, his cronies and his enemies. A female, OJ and another guy. They left Westmoreland in a car yesterday afternoon to go to Old Arbor. The plan was to check in a hotel last night. Go to the dead yard, then go to the funeral. The video on your screen is that of OJ in the hotel lobby checking in. This was at a hotel at Grove Farms in the Gutters area of Old Arbor about 7.30 last night. While they were waiting to check in. A lone hoodlum entered the lobby with a gun in his hand and due to YouTube's policy, I can't show you what took place next, but I can tell you. The hoodlum, he opened gunfire hitting OJ several times to his upper body. OJ, he fell to the ground and the hoodlum, he ran back through the hotel door and made good his escape in the area. From all indication, OJ, he died on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, eight 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. Now, <laughs> now, you young lady, your yeah man, you, I have a message for you. Some persons are saying that you were the one who set up OJ's death. I am sure you heard it already because I am told that you said you are planning to go back to Westmoreland for your clothes and go back elsewhere. Young lady, young lady, 
his cronies are planning to kill you. So, if you really know who do this, I would encourage you to give the information to the police. If you don't know who did it, I'm not even sure what to tell you. But make sure you do what it takes to protect yourself. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin if we just unite. What a country this will be if we just unite. Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Yeah.